Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to our weekly crypto market updates with your host, fd 4 tv Now, this week is packed, but before we jump into this week's updates, guys, let's do some housekeeping first. So what I'm going to share with you in this video is not financial advice. If that's what you are looking for, please go somewhere else. Go find someone who's actually trying to give you financial advice, not some dude on YouTube. And if you're from the UK, please note that this video is not intended for UK viewers. Why? Because the UK authorities do deem crypto assets to be extremely risky Therefore, retail investors may end up losing all their funds. That said, let's jump into this weekly crypto market updates. Another week, another cycle high for Bitcoin. Yes, you may need to start getting used to those kinds of headlines soon, but this is true for this week at least. With many expecting Bitcoin to retrace to the mid-30s, Bitcoin did what it has always done, not caring an inch what the majority are thinking, going past 52k with relative ease. But that's now old news. So in this video, we are going to be going over the following. The state of Wall Street Sport Bitcoin ETF. Just an update, how much does BlackRock now hold in its Sport Bitcoin ETF holding? And gold ETFs, why are they bleeding? Why do they have so much in terms of outflows? And where is that all going? The Kraken exchange is crazy move for the UK market. And crypto enters politics in the US with the lawyer who became so popular within the space during the XRP versus SEC long running case. Think he became a feature as far as XRP was concerned. And then one of of my favorite holdings, Neutron, a blockchain on Cosmos Network. That crazy run this week. We need to touch on it briefly. And finally, we have one more useless narrative that joins the space. If you want to know what that is, please keep watching. But there is no better place to start than with our dear old friend. They are now our friend, right? BlackRock. And their spot Bitcoin ETF holding. As of the 15th of February 2024, BlackRock now holds 115,990 Bitcoin. That's huge. And it's worth a whopping 6.06 six billion dollars now let's take a moment to appreciate what's happening here in just over a month blackrock have amassed over hundred thousand bitcoin and that is before the marketing efforts of all providers go into overdrive that is scary it's a scary prospect good but in a scary way they were always going to win this one weren't they if you ever doubted that you were listening to the wrong people because we kept saying yes you got 11 but there is going to be one winner even after the first week of trading we called it anyway one more noticeable change in this week's update is the fact that that Grayscale's assets under management or AUM actually went up by around $3 billion. Now, some of the increases are definitely due to the price increase of Bitcoin during the week, but could Grayscale actually be buying more Bitcoin to add to their ETF? No one knows. Possibly. I will have to review the figures separately. Here are the rest of the spot Bitcoin ETF holdings for the other participants. Uh, it's eight after BlackRock and uh, Grayscale. So you got Fidelity, who now have assets under management of $4.25 billion, staying very close to BlackRock. You got ARK Invest at 1.3 billion or 1.29 billion. Then you have Bitwise at just over 1 billion. Then we have your Invesco Galaxy at 314 million, Vanek at 187 million, Valkyrie at 144 million. Then uh, Franklin and Templeton is starting to move up now. Is it 99 million or somewhere thereabouts? And then you got uh, Wisdom Tree 26.4. And at this moment in time, I still think Wisdom Tree will be the first casualty. That pound of asset has been like that. It's been pending for a while. Don't know when it to actually come into play. But that is the state of the spot Bitcoin ETF from Wall Street, where most of this buying pressure is coming from. I mean, it's coming from both sides. You've got Grayscale selling pressure as well as the other players, the other nine trying to buy. And they are doing a good job because most of their volumes now, on the 16th of February, for example, BlackRock's volume surpasses that of Grayscale. So if it was selling pressure, that volume, it was all absorbed by BlackRock. But then there might be some selling as well within the BlackRock. It's not all buying because they are trading. I don't know whether the regulation actually stipulate how long they need to hold them before they start selling them. Anyway, as you can see, Grayscale's volume has been surpassed by that of BlackRock, like I said, and other ETF providers have been on the increase as well, including, like I said, even Wisdom Tree. Now, let's move on to the crazy, crazy news coming out of Kraken as far as the UK market is concerned. I understand that they have now required users to declare their self-custody wallets, in other words, a backdoor to try and KYC self-custody wallets. What's happening in the UK? God, that's why everyone is going to Dubai now. <laughs> if there's a sure way to lose a group of people, I'm sure this is one of them. My self custard wallet is none of your business, Kraken. Do you get that? It's none of your business. It's probably time people stop using Kraken for now. For me, it certainly is going to be relegated to my last favorite crypto exchange. It used to be one of my favorites. Now it's going to be my least favorite exchange. And here I'll go off to Dexys then. If I can, I still have access to other central exchanges. So that if they don't walk backwards with this one, they're going to lose lots of customers. Maybe they've already done the 
numbers and they don't care if they lose the UK customer base or not. We'll wait and find out. Let's move on to crypto entering politics with John Deaton, that famous XRP lawyer or law expert who is intimating or registering interest in trying to take on one of crypto's enemies in Senator Elizabeth Warren during the upcoming US election. A year one needs to raise at least 100 million to even entertain the idea of winning to become a senator in the US. It's all money, isn't it? Elizabeth Warren can't afford that. She's got a Fed bank balance from where she doesn't earn that in salary. Someone is paying her to do that. So she can easily raise it from her bank buddies, I should assume. As for John Deaton, dude, I'm sure the crypto space will support you in whatever way you want. You could say that is probably one of the many ways to influence crypto agenda in Washington. You never know. But enough of the drama of the US politics. It's a joke. The US politics. It's a joke. But Biden and Trump, that's the best Americans can produce. Come on. Back to crypto proper then. And we jump into one of my crypto holdings in Neutron. The Neutron token has been on a chart during the past week. I think for my entry position, I was about 5x, which is just crazy. This week alone, the position doubled in size, which is just crazy too. For me, I leveraged Neutron for the Atom coin. I think Neutron will outperform the Atom coin by miles during this cycle. For more on what I think the Neutron token will get to price wise, please go watch our videos on price predictions for 2024. I'll leave some links for you to go and check it out. And finally, one of the most useless narratives to ever grace the crypto space. I'm talking of the ERC 404. Yes, some people made a killing, but those were the lucky ones. Everyone else, look at those charts. I've been following this narrative from the beginning, and I can safely say this is not for me. Straight out of this scammer's book. Look at most of the charts. I've seen meme coins with better price action than some of these. In my honest opinion, the only winners here are the creators and the paid up crypto influencers. What do you think? Did you make any money out of investing into ERC 404? Please let me know in the comment section. Until the next one, guys, this was your crypto weekly market updates from your host, FD for Sagepark.tv. Signing out for now. Bye.